By the end of this video, if you enjoyed it, please like and subscribe. But without further ado, let's just get into it. The Soul Society sends two Soul Reapers from Squad 13, Shino Madarame and Ryunosuke Yuki, to Karakura Town to deal with an increasing amount of hollows within the area. They split up to look for hollows, because that's always a great idea, right? Ryunosuke is attacked by a hollow and runs to find Shino. He finds Shino almost dead when a hollow strikes him from behind. As the Soul Reapers are about to be killed by the hollows, Chad, Ichigo, Orihime, and Uryu appear. They kill the hollows and rescue the Soul Reapers. They bring Shino and Ryunosuke back to Ichigo's house to recover. As they wake up, a man called Asgiaro Eburn shows up outside of Ichigo's window, like an e-girl simp. Ichigo proceeds to fight him alone, leaving his friends in his room. Eburn whips out his cross, a Quincy cross that is, and summons a weapon firing Reishi bullets, similar to Ishida's. Ichigo uses his Bankai, and Eburn gets so excited you think he's about to- <laughs> Eburn chants and holds up a small disc as Ichigo's Bankai begins to tear apart. When it doesn't vanish entirely, Ebron's like, oh crap, and disappears into the shadows. Meanwhile, in the Soul Society, Squad 11's Ayasagawa and Madarame investigate a mass disappearance of residents from the Rukon district of the Soul Society. Shortly after, seven cloaked men appear in front of Genryusai Yamamoto. They declare war on the Soul Society to take place in five days. Oh, and they've got Chojiro Sasakibe, who's got one foot in the grave. The men vanish into the shadows as Yamamoto launches a wall of flames, and they escape. With his dying breath, Sasakibe tells Yamamoto the enemy has the ability to seal a Bankai. The cloaked men, aka the stern Ritter, reappear in Hueco Mundo, bowing before their king, Yawach. Ibrun and another guy, Ludas, argue, but Yawach is definitely not in the mood. He cuts off Ludas' arm without moving a muscle, citing a distaste for conflict. Then Yowatch goes full Game of Thrones and beheads Ludas for setting a 5 day deadline without permission. And guess what, Ibrun's next on the chopping block, because he's done with his job of keeping Ichigo distracted. In response to the attack, the Soul Society control room sends a message to all squads, including Shino and Ryunosuke, debriefing the declaration of war. They also mention a 182 second battle outside the Soul Society's front gate where a single intruder killed all 162 members of Squad 1. Later, Neliel and Pesce literally fall out of the sky onto Ichigo like they're in some kind of shitty comedy. They're bawling their eyes out, begging for help. Apparently, Hueco Mundo got taken over by Yowach and Haribel got captured. Bummer. Urahara shows up and offers to bring Ichigo and his group to Hueco Mundo. So Urahara, Chad, Orihime, Neliel, and Pesce travel through La Garganta, and they're greeted by a pile of dead hollows, Hueco Mundo's version of a welcome mat. They spot a stern Ritter, Kyoge Opi, just casually kidnapping Arankars and forcing them to join the army. Loli Averne and Menoli Mali are captured, and Apache, Mila Rose, and Sung Sun attempt to save them. Kyoge just dispatches them with ease as Ichigo appears. Kyoge and Ichigo begin to fight, and Ichigo notices Kyoge fights a lot like Ishida, he realizes the enemy is an army of Quincy's, called the Wandenreich. Kyoge then goes Super Saiyan Quincy mode, activating Quincy Vol Stern Deke. He draws the Reishi from the air, and the surrounding area begins to rip apart. The absorbed Reishi manifests as wings and armor. Kyoge is attacked by Ion, a hollow summoned through the sacrifice of Apache, Mila Rose, and Sung Sun's left arms. Ion begins to demolish Kyoge but Kyoge activates Sklave Rai, a Quincy ability used to absorb the Reishi from the surrounding areas. Drained of Reishi, Ion falls to the ground, defeated, and Kyoge gains Ion's physical attributes. Ichigo realizes the only way to defeat Kyoge is by destroying the disc on his head, so he launches a full-on assault. Meanwhile, seeing Eburn prompts Ishida to begin to look into the Quincy history. In short, while Soul Reapers purify Hollows and return them to the Soul Society, Quincy's fully annihilate them. If left unchecked, the Quincy's actions will lead to an imbalance and destruction of the Soul Society. Seeing this 200 years ago, when Quincy's were aplenty, the Soul Reapers launched a genocide against the Quincy's, dubbed the Quincy Extermination Operation. 
As Yellwatch learns that Ichigo is distracted by Kyoge Opie, the Wandenreich begin their assault on the Soul Society. The Stern Ritter split up and each attack a different section of the Soul Society and immediately overpower the Soul Reapers. Byakuya and Renji confront two Stern Ritters, Masked a Masculine, who all call Macho Man, and As Note, who all call Sticky Note. Sajin Komomura, Toshiro Hitsugaya, and Soifon each confront a separate Stern Ritter. Like complete fucking idiots, Byakuya, Sajin, and Toshiro all use their Bankai at the exact same time. Because even though they know it will get sealed, they each want to understand how it works so the others can use their Bankai to stop the intruders. So all four captains lose their Bankai. Real smooth. And even worse, they realize their Bankais aren't just being sealed, they're being stolen, meaning the Stern Ritters can use it against them. Realizing how dire the situation is, the Serite's central command issues a plea for Ichigo's assistance. Urahara receives the request and one-shots Kyoge, before opening La Garganta for Ichigo to reach the Soul Society. But shocker, Kyoge's playing possum. He sneaks up behind Urahara and shoots Reishi into La Garganta, where he traps Ichigo. He's about to off Urahara, Orohime, Chad, and Nell when some mysterious dude off-screen kills him. Sticky Note pierces Byakuya with special thorns imbued with the ability to induce insurmountable fear. Sticky Note uses Senbon Sakura and strikes down Byakuya, while Macho Man defeats Renji and destroys his Bankai. Hey, Sakura finally managed to beat someone. Enter Kampachi Zaraki and Yamamoto. Zaraki slaughters three Stern Raiders like it's nothing, and Yamamoto avenges Sasakibe by killing his killer. Amazingly, Yowatch beats Zaraki and the battle between Yamamoto and Yowatch begins. Yamamoto summons heat so intense it burns the battlefield. He uses his Bankai, Zanka no Tachi, summoning a heat so intense the surrounding area becomes hotter than a goth girl. Yamamoto uses four different forms of his Bankai. First he uses East, where he seals his flames inside the tip of his blade. He then switches to the other form, West, where he seals the flames inside his body. He then uses South, which reanimates the dead bodies of the battlefield into zombie soldiers. Finally, he uses North, an ultimate and all-powerful blow, killing Yowatch. But it turns out the man Yamamoto killed was a stern Ritter with the ability to transform into others. The real Yowatch appears, revealing that for the entire battle thus far, he was speaking with Aizen. Yowatch wanted Aizen on his side for the whole destroy the soul society spiel, but Aizen said nope. Thus, Yowatch steals Yamamoto's Bankai and kills him. Dun dun dun! Ichigo busts out of La Garganta like it's the 1st of December and enters the battle. He engages Yowatch, and he's defeated and stabbed through the throat. But he's saved by Blood Vein, a defensive Reishi ability exclusive to Quincy's. Yowatch realizes that letting Kyoge be the one to hold Ichigo at bay was a terrible idea. The Reishi constructing Ichigo's jail activated the latent Quincy abilities within Ichigo's spiritual pressure and Yowatch reveals to Ichigo that his mother was a Quincy. We might as well call him Johnny Sins at this point. He can do everything. Yowatch decides to take Ichigo to the Wandenreich to enslave him, but runs out of the time he is able to stay inside the Soul Society. During Yowatch's conversation with Aizen, Aizen managed to alter his perception of time, effectively saving the Soul Society. Yowatch destroys Ichigo's Bankai and the Stern Ritter peace out. The battle is finally over. After the dust settles, Rukia, Renji, and Byakuya are hanging on by a thread. Kurotsuchi swoops in with an offer to fix Ichigo's Zanpakuto. To do that, he brings in Squad Zero, the direct subordinates of the Soul King. Each member was a previous captain of the 13 Court Guard squads, and their combined might is greater than that of the current Gotei 13. They consist of Ichibe Hyosube, Tenjiro Kirinji, Kirio Hikifune, Oetsu Nimaya, and Senjumaru Shitara. They take Ichigo and an incapacitated Renji and Byakuya to the castle of the Soul King, the Royal Palace, for some good old TLC. They first visit Tenjiro's castle. Ichigo, Renji, and Byakuya are transferred back and forth between a hot spring and a bloodbath, a method used to restore spiritual pressure. Ichigo and Renji heal up enough to travel to the next castle, owned by Kirio Hikifune, 
Kirio cooks them a huge feast. At this point, they're fully healed, so they travel to Oetsu's palace to rebuild Ichigo's Bankai. Oetsu is revealed to be the creator of Zanpak To itself. Meanwhile, in the Soul Society, Shunsui is declared the new Squad 1 captain. He asks Central 46 to allow Zaraki to learn Zanjutsu. And because of the extremely dire circumstances, they agree. Shunsui requests Unohana to train Kenpachi, revealing that she was the first Kenpachi. Unohana takes Zaraki to a cave deep underground and they fight, with Zaraki unleashing his full might for the first time. We learn the backstory behind these two fighters and the meaning of the term Kenpachi. In the age of the original 13 court guard squads, Yachiru Unohana was the captain of squad 11 and the most ruthless killer in the Soul Society. While scouting the Soul Society, she finds a mountain of dead bodies. The boy who made the mountain of dead bodies attacks her, leaving a gaping scar. The only one to ever accomplish such a feat. That boy was Zaraki. Zaraki, who lived a pretty boring life not being able to fight anyone with anywhere near his level of strength, has fun for the first time in his life. He was truly stronger than Unohana, but fearing the end to his only source of joy forces him to subconsciously suppress his own power and he loses the battle. That's a trait that stuck with him until the present, even as he fights the current Unohana. That's why Unohana agreed to fight him. She wants to push him far enough in order to unleash his full power. She activates her Bankai, summoning a pool of blood, and just goes crazy. Still, Tsuraki overpowers Unohana and kills her. Tsuraki begins to hear voices in his head, and it's revealed that it's his sword talking to him, the fight is finally over. In the royal palace, Oetsu leads Ichigo and Renji to a basement, like some kind of horror movie. They're attacked by a horde of zombies, and Oetsu reveals the zombies are Asauchi, the training blade soul reapers use until they transform into Zanpakuto. Three days pass, and Renji has somehow successfully rebuilt his Bankai, whereas Ichigo lies on the ground bloody. Oetsu tells Ichigo he failed the test and it's impossible for him to rebuild his Zanpakuto because he's not a real Soul Reaper. So he sends Ichigo back to the normal world. Big oof. Ichigo is too ashamed to see his family, so he makes his way to Unagiya, but his father brings him back. Ichigo's father explains to Ichigo the story of how he met his mother. In short, when Ichigo's father Ishin Shiba was captain of Squad 10, he was sent to the human world to investigate the mysterious death of three Soul Reapers stationed in Nazuki. Masaki Kurosaki also happened to live in Nazuki at the time. Being one of the few pure Quincy's remaining, she was a ward of the Ishida family, expected to marry Ryuken, Ishida's father. A strange black hollow attacks Ishin. Sensing the spiritual pressures, Masaki runs to check it out. As Ishin's about to be killed, Masaki attacks the hollow with the Quincy arrow. The hollow attacks her instead, biting her shoulder. Masaki uses the opportunity to kill the hollow with a short point blank attack, but the hollow explodes. Ishin saves her by using his body to shield her from the explosion. Aizen, Gin, and Tosen were lurking above, experimenting with hollowfication on Soul Reapers. They're all like, Nani? Hollow bonding with Quincy? Huh? As Ishin returns to the Soul Society, Masaki starts to have migraines due to the hollow. She bumps into Kisuke, who senses the hollow inside of her. When she returns to the Ishida residence, she collapses, and a hollow hole begins to form. Ryukin rushes her to the hospital. On the way, they're attacked by a hollow, but Ishin saves them. Kisuke appears and offers to save Masaki. Kisuke's solution? A nearby Soul Reaper must be connected to Masaki and her descendants through Reishi at all times. The Soul Reaper would have to enter a Gigai and lose all Soul Reaper abilities permanently. Ishin agrees, saving her life. Soon after, they fall in love and get married. Pretty girl and person with pee, pee you can guess what happens next. Then Ishin reveals the true cause of Masaki's death. When she was attacked by Grand Fisher, her blood vein should have been more than enough for her to wipe the floor with it. But at that moment, Yawach took back powers from any Quincy who he thought of as being impure, including Masaki due to her black hollow. This led to her death, and the death of Ryugin's mother as well. Yowatch has the ability because he was the first Quincy, and his blood flows through every single Quincy, including Ichigo. Years later, when Ichigo meets Rukia and the hollow inside him awakens, 
the Reishi string between him and Ishin was destroyed, which is why Ishin regained his Soul Reaper powers. Upon learning this pass, a now fully motivated Ichigo returns to the royal palace and tries to rebuild his Bankai once again. This time, instead of the zombies attacking him, they bow down. Ichigo walks to one particular one and holds out his hand, and it turns into a hollow. Oetsu offers to reforge the hollow into a Bankai. Oetsu summons his bodyguards and they start turning the Osauchi into a Zanpakuto. Oetsu tells Ichigo, the Zanpakuto is literally the hollow inside of him. This means the old man from Ichigo's mind wasn't really Zangetsu. It was an alternate version of Yawatch speaking to Ichigo through his Quincy blood. The alternate Yawatch reveals he'd been suppressing Ichigo's inner hollow all along, because he feared his true version would have to kill Ichigo down the line if he continued to use them. The alternate Yawatch, who came to love Ichigo, leaves Ichigo's mind, freeing his true and unsuppressed Zangetsu. Meanwhile, the Soul Society is busy power leveling. Kurotsuchi goes AWOL, and his lieutenant Akon spies on him creating something nasty. Sajin seeks his clan's secret technique, but the elder gets angry and attacks. In the Wandenreich, Uryu joins Yowatch's army, and the cure ends. Alright, that's it for me today. I honestly, I hope you guys liked the video. If you guys did, uh, subscribe and like would be so awesome. That being said, that's it for me today. I hope you have a great day, and goodbye.